The BBC Microbit is a great device for learning programming. One limitation of it is the limited display, which is provided by the LEDs. Basically, you've got a 5x5 five five LED matrix, which can display either on or off. And that's quite limited. It can provide a scrolling text display, but it's far from user friendly. So here I'm going to look at how we can connect the microbit to an LCD display. This will be using a 1602 LCD with an I2C connection. In this example, I'll be creating a stopwatch, which can be used as a simple timer. In this video, I'm going to be using MakeCode. This is a graphical block-based programming language created by Microsoft that could be used on the microbit. And I'll also be looking at JavaScript. On, in a later video, I'll be looking at Python. So if you prefer Python and want to look at that, then make sure you subscribe to my channel and then you can see that video when it comes available. So let's have a quick look at the hardware. Obviously we need a micro bit. You can use either version one or version two, either will work just as well. We also need a breakout adapter. The one I have involved soldering, but you can get one that's already pre-soldered. The important thing is it needs to have pins 19 and 20, which are the ones you use for I squared C. You also need a five volt power supply, and this can be the same power supply as used to power the micro bit, but that depends upon your breakout board. In my case, I needed a separate power supply. and I just used a micro USB breakout board on my breadboard and connected that through another USB cable. Obviously you need a 1602 LCD display. Specifically you need one with this I2C adapter, often referred to as I2C. If you're searching for one, they are commonly available and they are fairly cheap. And then you just need some jumper wires to connect them all together. There's loads more information on my website. If you see the link in the description and that will show you all the things you need and a bit more explanation about them. If you look at the LCD, you'll see that it's mounted on a PCB. And if you turn it around on the back, you'll see that there's then another PCB that's piggybacked on the back as a add-on extra. This is the I2C adapter. This adapter provides a way of sending the information as serial data using only three wires. Without this, then you'd need to use a lot more pins on the micro bit. And so that's why this is quite a popular way of controlling these LCD displays. To wire it up, you just need to connect the ground of the LCD display I squared C adapter to the micro bit. The SDA connection goes to pin 20 and the SCL connection goes to pin 19 and then you need to connect the 5 volt power supply to the LCD display. If it's an independent power supply you'll also need to connect the grounds together. Here we're going to look at starting the coding. I recommend using the Chrome browser which is what I'm using here and just go to the website microbit.org and then choose Let's Code. So you've got a choice of different editors here and we're going to go for the Make Code Editor. And I've got some projects here I've been working on already but I'm going to start a new project and we're going to call this the Stopwatch Project and click Create. And you'll see that it starts by dropping us into this block-based editor, which is based around the make code editor. You can switch it to JavaScript, and you can even switch it to Python. And it will keep the code in sync as long as you stick to the methods and things that are available in here. 
there's some parts of Python that are different to uh, the normal Python. So that's why I'm going to put that in a separate video and I'm just going to stick with blocks and then I'll share the code in JavaScript on here. Uh, now the first thing you need to do to allow you to use the LCD is to add an extension. And that's done by clicking on the advanced button and going to extensions. You can search for LCD here. I'm going to recommend use the make a bit LCD extension, which is this one. It's based around a particular kit called the make a bit, but I've found this one works better than some of the others, which seem to have a few glitches or potential bugs in the software. And now we've, once we've got this added here, you'll see there's a, a new block here. And from here, we can just drag and drop the code. Uh, the important thing is to start by connecting to the LCD screen and initializing it with its I squared C address. The I squared C address is an addressing screen that allows you to address different I squared C devices on the same bus. I'm not going to go into much detail in here. I've got other videos that go into a lot more detail about that. But the important thing is that we need to know the address. And typically that's 39. There are other backpack boards that may need slightly different values. If you find that yours doesn't work, if you have a look at the part number that's on the, the chip on your board, you can do a quick Google on that and find out what address that would be. But for most, you can just leave that as the default at 39. And we start just by testing that and we'll send a message to the board, to the LCD display. This one, the way this one works is you start with a position, which if you pop this up, assuming this is a 16 by two display, then you'll see you've got one to 16 on the top and then 17 to 32 at the on the second row. So we'll go for one with a length of 16. That means this will only ever occupy this first row. And it's going to show, I'm going to show make a bit. I'm going to say, use the traditional hello world, which is what you generally do on your first ever program. Just move that out of the way. Um, click on download. If you, this is the first time you've connected your micro bit, then you can connect the device here. This one's already paired, so I've just connected that. And once you're connected, you can then just click download. If you weren't able to connect, you can download to your local computer and then drag and drop it. But find using the Chrome browser, if you connect it, then you can just click download. It's going to reset the display and it's going to display Hello World on top. So that's the basic of how you use that. I'm going to go now full in and we'll create our first attempt at a timer. I'm going to create a variable called timer, which will track how long has passed. And we're going to set that initially to zero in this start. In the forever, that, we'll just change that to stopwatch. Which is what we're going to do here. And in the forever loop, we're going to show the value of this timer. And we can just take that variable and pop it in there. And we're going to put this on the second row. So starting number 17. We can leave that length of 16 because we're not going to put anything else on that row. Then we're going to have it pause. 
So that's a basic operation. And this is in milliseconds. So we change that to one second, so 1000 milliseconds. And then after then, we're going to increase the time. So change timer by one. So it's going to increase the timer by one each time. At this point, you can click download and run that. And you'll just see stopwatch with it counting up. So there's no way to stop and start at this point. So that's what we're going to move on to implement next. So I'm going to use the input. I'm going to use button A to play and pause. I'm going to do another button. And you see it's shaded out because we've already got a button A. We're going to change that to button B and that's going to be used to reset the time. So to be able to track whether the program's running or not, we need to create another variable and I'm going to call that running. And I'm going to start by setting it initially. Now I could use numbers and remember what those numbers mean, but I could also use a Boolean variable. And a Boolean variable has the value of either true or false. And it kind of makes it a bit more readable this because it's going to say set running to true when it's running and set running to false when it's not running. So makes it just that little bit more readable. And we can get that from these logic blocks. So actually we'll set, set it to false initially. So we'll set it to false and then if button A is pressed, we would set running to true. So let's just do that. And now what will happen is if we press A, then it'll change the state running to true. But then we also need to be able to stop it again. So I'm going to put some logic in here and I'm going to use an if. I'm going to move this in here. So if running variable if running. Now you may be to, you may want to put if running equals true in here, but you don't need to because running already is true um, and it's a, it's going to evaluate to true. So that means that this if condition will be met. If so if we're already running and A is being pressed, then we want to set this to false. And if not, we're going to set running to true. And that allows us to play and pause. And then in here, we want to set it so that this time we only increments if we're running. So if I get, go back into the if true, we just put it in there and then we take that code in there. So this provides a way of playing and pausing the timer. Remember this is just toggling it. So if it's running and the button's pressed, then it sets it to false. If it's not running, so it's already false, then it will set it to true. And then this bit of code needs the variable if running, then it will run this code, which means it will increase the counter. And if not, then it will stop. And then finally, we need to implement a reset option in here. So we'll do that by setting the timer to zero. So 
we set the timer to zero. And then we, if we clear the display, and we can duplicate this into it, and then share the timer as well. Okay, this. Potentially we don't need this last one because it'll get called next time in the forever loop. But this will mean it gets shown immediately. And now we should be able to download that and see if that works. Right, so it's downloaded the screen now says stop watching zero. We can set it running by pressing the A button and it starts counting up. Pause it by pressing the A button again. It stops counting. And reset it by pressing the B button. And that's it. That's essentially our stopwatch that's been created. So I'll just show how this works in JavaScript as well. So if you look, we've got basically these uh, four functions. One is run on startup, which is the initialization. One is called the forever loop, which will run forever, um, all the time that the program's running. And then a bit of code that runs when A is pressed and a bit which runs when B is pressed. And we can see how this works in the JavaScript, not necessarily in the same order as I've said. Uh, so this is the initialization code. This is the um, on start code that runs initially. And then this is the forever loop. And these are built in to the uh, the way that JavaScript is in a, is supported on the micro bit. And anything you put into this forever function will run. And you can see that the apart from the syntax has to be a bit more specific, then it's essentially the same words that was used in the make code bit. So one of the things it's done here is uh, it needs a string for this show string function and it does that by creating an empty string and then adding the value of the timer into it. So that's just a, a bit of the, the syntax that you need to be aware of uh, which you can see by just looking through the code. And then these are the on button press uh, functions, one for A and one for B, and you can see that the code is very much similar to how it's worded in the block. And you can download from, from the JavaScript if you prefer. It's essentially going to create this exact same code. And that's essentially it. So just a, a short video, I've just shown you basically how you can connect an LCD display to the micro bit and use that to display messages. It adds a lot more flexibility to the micro bit and means that you can accomplish a lot more or have better interaction potentially with the users. Hope you found that video useful. As I say, I'll also be creating one on Python. So if you're more interested in that, then that'll be on a future video. If it's been useful, then please give it a thumbs up, give it a like and subscribe to my channel to find future videos on both the microbit and other maker projects including raspberry pi and arduino and i look forward to seeing you on a future video thanks for watching